Hello dear students, I welcome you in this video. Dear students, we have created a telegram channel called Literature Simply and we post on that telegram channel different types of material in the form of PDFs. If you need this material, you can join our telegram channel Literature Simply. Today we are going to discuss about a new poet in restoration age. We are talking about restoration age and in the last video we covered some historical and literary background to this restoration period and now we have uh, the poets and literary figures in restoration period. So dear students here we have a great figure in restoration period that is John Dryden. This video is dedicated to John Dryden and we will cover the major works of John Dryden and background or the life of John Dryden and his career. So let's start. Students, this is hash 20 history of English literature and we are covering John Dryden, greatest of the restoration figure. So let's start. First, let's start with a remark by William J. Long about John Dryden so that we can understand the very place of John Dryden in English literature. So I quote, log by which the waters of English poetry were laid down from the mountains of Shakespeare and Milton to the plain of Pope. So in this particular statement, you find that if you consider literature as a canal of water, here William J. Long says that John Dryden is the lock in that canal of water and he is directly compared with Oh, Shakespeare, Milton and Pope. So through this statement we understand his place in English literature. So if Shakespeare's literature is like a flow flowing from the mountain and here John Dryden works or the literature of John Dryden is like a lock in that canal, in that flow, in that stream. So this is very important regarding John Dryden and he is directly compared with Milton, Shakespeare and Alexander Pope. So first let's talk about the life of John Dryden and then move to the works of John Dryden. Dear students, John Dryden was born in Aldwinkle, a village in Northamptonshire in England in 1631. His family was a prosperous family and he was born and brought up in Puritan faith. So they followed Puritan religion. We can understand the culture in their family through this Puritanism. Then he went to the famous Westminster School and Cambridge University and there he studied a lot of subject. He studied a lot of streams and he was considered as one of the educated, best educated men at his time in England. So we can understand his childhood, his education as he went to the prestigious schools like Westminster School and Cambridge University and he got opportunity to study various subjects, different types of streams and he increased his knowledge a lot there and he rose as an educated man at that time. So we can understand this opportunity made him a gentleman and from there uh, he received the attention of public when uh, we go further and understand his literature. In 1667 he composed a narrative poem called Annus Mirabilis and in through this poem or with this poem he became more famous. He established himself as a writer, as a poet in the England or in London. Then his career flourished and he appointed England's first poet laureate in 1668 and also he was appointed as the collector of Port of London. So dear students this place the collector of Port of London is important because at a time once this place was held by Geoffrey Chaucer the rising star of English literature and the same place here John Dryden received the collector of Port of London and this prestigious laureateship uh, the poet laureate he was appointed first poet laureate of England John Dryden if you uh, remember you will understand how uh, this tradition 
the tradition of poet laureate began right from john dryden he was given the prestigious place and he was considered the significant poet in the uh, court of england then students he turned to religion and politics from there and he composed many uh, works on religion and politics at that time and it is uh, one of the uh, thing he refused allegiance to william of orange he refused loyalty to william of orange and he has to pay the price for this refusal and he was deprived of all government offices and pensions and then he turned into poverty and after that he tried almost every form of literature to make his living wood you can understand how uh, some poets or the authors make their livelihood through literature they composed various uh, types of literature here we can understand that uh, john dryden also composed different types of literature he tried every form of literature almost every form of literature he composed treatises he composed poems he composed mock epics he also composed essays he composed the prefaces to his poems and works he composed dramas his dramas also are very famous a host of literature he composed for livelihood and he paid get paid for the, all these literature he made his livelihood through literature so we can understand how literature was significant at that time in england through which again john dryden got his reputation again he became a prestigious person in the society after refusal of the allegiance or loyalty to william of orange you can see that how this struggle might have uh, transformed john dryden and how he might have composed all this literature so these things are inspirational things for the persons like us who study literature in that particular situation he worked hard and again made his livelihood through literature so this point is important he also was a well versed translator and he translated ovid homer and virgil and these translations become famous and uh, here he died in 1700 and buried near chaucer at westminster abbey so this place his uh, we find tombstone of john dryden near the tombstone of geoffrey chaucer, chaucer one of the glamorous poet of that time and uh, through this place which he was given in westminster abbey we find that how he was significant for the english people and for the english court also because he was poet laureate so this is all about his life now let's move to the next part that is his literature dear students as i just discussed he composed many forms of literature many types of literature here we are consider considering only important or major works of john dryden here we have very first absalom and akitaphone a powerful political satire published in 1681 then we have his famous narrative poem called annus mirabilis which gave him the reputation in english uh, world next we have alexander's feast his most enduring ode as we know he composed many types of literature here we have an ode alexander's feast composed in 1697 the next poem we have astria redux composed in 1660 this is also a remarkable poem by john dryden then we have a mock epic called mac Flecknoe, composed in 1682 actually it is a satire then we have his an essay of dramatic poesy composed in 1668 it is a work of criticism and we also know john dryden as a critic because he composed prefaces to his poems his dramas and in those prefaces we found his opinions regarding literature his views about literature and these views are very important in literary criticism he directly talks about the qualities of literature he directly talks about the very base of literature what kind of literature there should be what kind of elements there should be in literature and he is one of the authoritative figure why because he composed almost all forms of literature and he knew very well what kind of literature is there and what should be there in the literature we understand through his different dramas and 
his work an essay on dramatic poesy so this is an important essay in literary criticism next we have religio lesi composed in 1682 it is a poem uh, religio lesi means religion of a layman then we have his ambitious poem called the hind and the panther this is a religious poem he expresses his religious views here the hind stands for the roman church and he talks about the religion puritanism different elements it is published in 1687 then we have his next work fables ancient and modern a collection of poems or a collection of fables composed in 1700 now students we have his major dramas or famous dramas very first we have the wild gallant 1663 it is a comedy then we have rival ladies 1663 it is a tragic comedy the indian queen 1664 again a tragedy the italian emperor 1665 it is a heroic drama dear student john dryden established heroic couplet as a powerful form of writing he did not pay more attention to the style but he paid attention to the clarity of language to the uh, we can say that the simplicity of language and his focus was on to make people understand what he wanted or what he wished to convey so this clarity of language has given him popularity and he became popular among the common masses and he established or developed a very great form of writing that is heroic couplet next we have secret love composed in 1667 it is a tragic comedy then conquest of granada 1673 again a tragedy marriage a la mode 1673 again a comedy aurangzeb 1676 a tragedy so if you look at all these titles you will understand he composed with many themes common themes and also uh, the high class themes if here you see uh, he composed a drama on marriage there we find how common type of themes he chose in his literature before dryden we do not find such common themes or such common subjects in the literature or in the writing writing but he experimented on every aspect of uh, literature with the experience of life and he included the different types of themes themes of love we have themes of uh, again uh, the war and battle Uh, the themes of common people like marriage etc so this is the greatness of john dryden and uh, now dear students uh, if we think about john dryden and his influence and the place in english literature we must consider three important points regarding john dryden very first we have establishment of heroic couplet he established heroic couplet very firmly in english literature and this has influence on english literature then his development of a direct serviceable prose style as uh, we found that he did not pay more attention to the elegant style but he developed a direct and serviceable prose style and simplicity of language through his literature and the third point we have development of art of literary criticism here it is a special uh, focus we can uh, consider the literary criticism and it needs special videos on dryden's criticism but dryden here for our general understanding is a great critic we need to understand him in depth in the literary criticism because he established different canon in Uh, literary criticism as he developed these forms heroic couplet and the serviceable and uh, simple style of writing simplicity of language clarity of language very firmly and he did not pay more attention to the ornamentation of language but the clarity of language so on these points or with these points we need to consider him a different critic than the 
previous critics or the next critics he is the transition between two ages and hence he becomes important so friends this is all about john dryden we understood john dryden in this video if you have any query any problem you can directly comment below in the comment section i will answer to your comments and please convey me your uh, other problems related to literature i will try to solve them and we will make videos different videos on them so thank you very much for watching the complete video please share this video among your friends like this video and subscribe to literature simply if you are not subscribed yet because we make very different videos on different topics on this channel so let's meet in the next video thank you